What's up guys? I have up a 20 minute game against somebody rated 1212. So that's 350 points lower rated than me. And they've gone for this kind of Ponziani looking thing. Apparently it's called the McLeod attack. Okay, well I'm going to do what I would do against the Ponziani. So the Ponziani is when you bring out the knights, like e4, e5, knight, f3, knight, c6 first, right? And then white pushes c3 in preparation of d4. Okay, and now this is called the Laza Gambit. So we have a new variation for the, um, the Kruger fans out there. So I'm going to throw my knight out to f6 just to prevent any ideas of this queen coming down with check on h5. If they take here, I can. I know I can push this. All right, so I'm hitting the bishop and I'm, I've also... So what I'm doing is I'm applying exactly the same patterns that I would do in the uh, Calabresi counter gambit against the bishop's opening or the Russo or the Janish or whatever. All right, so now um, this pawn hangs, but do I want to snag it straight away? I'm thinking not, maybe not. Now he, he might want to go back there. If he wanted to save the pawn, he could have gone back there, but then he gets hit by this again, so. No, I'll take it. I'm gonna take it with development. So there are two benefits to that. Yes, I get a pawn and I also develop my, my bishop. I'm also maybe one step closer to castling queenside if I wish to castle queenside. Now, big question now. Do I want to push e4 and use a turn that way? You see, this pawn isn't defended, but I can, for example, play knight c6 or knight d7 and defend the pawn. I think that has to be the correct way to go. Now, he may move his bishop a third time and pin my knight. The bishop's already made two moves. Okay. So I'm not entirely convinced of that, but now what I can do, I could just push forward. Um, I could drop my own bishop back, but that feels a bit... I don't know. Bishop back takes, takes. Fine. Bishop back takes here, takes, then I can lose the pawn. Now I'm just going to push forward. If he wants to take here, I recapture with b-pawn. B then I'll just develop and castle short. That's fine. Happy with that. The Laza Gambit. Well, well, well. I've, see, I'm just not familiar with this McLeod attack at all. My opponent is called Sashin Bay 2000 from Turkey. Ah, yeah, yeah, right. My dark square bishop is a bit hampered for squares. It looks as though d6 is the, is the best looking square for that. Then I can castle straight away, get my king out of line of this pin. Right, okay, oh, he's traded, wow. One, two, three, four bishop moves in his first eight moves. And that, my friend, is why you have no development. Now, I want to castle here. So the big question is, so if, if I castle, actually, I put my rook on f8. So I think that my bishop is free to go here if it wants to. Question is, does it want to? I think it probably does. If I come here, it breaks the pin on the queen. I'm just going to go there, actually. And then it just, some, something tells me it's right. Um, key thing now, let's get the king safe and let's try and do something with this semi-open file. Wow. I'm going to call this guy Joe, not Sahin. He is Trader Joe, because he loves to trade. Look at him, trading. You should get a job on Wall Street. Look, his development is now reset to zero. Hello. Right, if I take this, it comes with a discovered check. Then I'm also attacking another pawn. 
this is so he's breaking a bunch of move, uh, rules here now I can take the pawn yeah um, but I don't have to I can also castle the thing I like about castling is it puts my rook on f8 lined up with that king over there if I take, he's got one, two, three options to recapture. That's just got 16 minutes. There's no rush. No rush at all. Let's figure this out. Huh? Right, I take, pawn takes. That is, pawns are just terribly weak, right? I take, knight takes. I can pin the knight. There's no, there's no real gain to doing that. I think it's there's more benefit to me from castling than there is in trading pawns. Because like I take, he takes back. I'm giving him free development of his knight or free development of his queen right now. Ooh, but rough. Um, <clears throat> so this this is just over ambitious play. Part of me I like the look of Bishop back to C eight and then to A6 with checking ideas. I feel like here it's just a bit cramped. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to drop my bishop all the way back there and make use of this gorgeous diagonal here. This is terrible, terrible play. I mean, this isn't 1200 play, in, in my personal opinion. Okay, now we've got holes all over the dark squares now. So part of me thinks coming here, then there, and the king can't go there, 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 there. Right, so he's almost... Yeah. The knight now can't do anything. The knight's only got one square. This is just horrendous. This pawn is also pinned by the rook. You see, we made that decision. Instead of trading pawns... So this is almost like a case study in when not to trade. Yeah. I decided to use that turn to castle and get my rook lined up with there. And now the bishop has moved, this pawn is pinned and can't take. If I take here now, okay, right, that's a reasonable move. Feel like I just want to throw this in. <sighs> okay, now I'm thinking queen here and that's like mate, isn't it? So let's just put the pressure on. So I think what we'll do at the end of this, which I suspect won't take forever at this rate, look at these, all the holes in the dark squares, yeah? Um, what I think we'll do is we'll go back through, we'll look at all of the tension positions, we'll look at all of the times where material was traded and try and see why, when, how it may have been a good idea or not. I think Knight here is... My only hope, is it? But well, I'm, I'm simply going to blitz up, eliminate the knight. All right, okay, so I've got a check here. So now he's blocked my bishop's view. So I'm just going to take here, I think, and then the idea is to push on. Check there, there, then we push on and win the knight, at the very least. Oh, hello. Oh! Oh, that was a move. Look at you finding a move. All right. And it prevents this. Huh. Just didn't think it through, did I? I just snatched at that one. Could come here and target B2 pawn. Um, also threatening maybe to go in there with mate. I've got good eyes on that. I like that. Um, this uh, that's my first thought. Materials actually equal, believe it or not. Hmm. This is why we should take our time. I want to bring this rook into the game, so I think that rook probably wants to go to e8, yeah? 
Uh, this looks okay. Can't see a downside. Knight can't come there or there. Yeah. Or there or there. Because bishop covers those. Pawn covers that. Queen covers... No, it doesn't. He can go here, actually. He can go there if he wants. But then he uh, gives up the pawn and check. And that's just nasty. If b3, then c takes b. It could be with triple pawns as well. See, what I, I did on that move was, I, I, I know that, fi that feeling, yeah? Um, I saw something that looked good and went, yeah, that'll do. Yeah, 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 that'll do. Right, now I'm thinking queen takes b2 check. King can't go there, 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 there. Can go there, but then this walks into pawn push with another check. What other options does he have, right? Okay, queen can't block there or there. Queen could block here. Um, but if... Hang on. Queen blocks are in the rook. Let's go ahead with that idea. I can always drop my bishop down to here, maybe. Or even to there, b5, where it's defended by a pawn. Now, you see, queen here, yeah, loses the rook. Um, queen can't go there or there. So that's kind of out. Right, what do we do? Take the rook. Um, I think so. Then he'll take my bish. Then I might push the pawn up, yeah? I might also play rook a e8. Just increase the pressure on that side of the board. This knight is now kind of offside. But if I come here... Oh no, he's got to move his queen. Okay, so where's he going to go? Where's his queen going to go? Right, can't go anywhere up, the, up here. Can't go there, can't go there. Can't really go there because he's now down material. Um, takes the pawn. I have a check. What is the queen going to do? Okay, so all these are all these are out. Here I just grab the pawn. Here I just grab the pawn. So that doesn't work. Here I take. So that's not on. Also, all of these are out. Um, so I'm thinking. Oh, but actually, I'm attacking the knight. Oh, hang on, hang on. What did I just say? Oh, yeah, here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I think the queen's going to go to one of these two squares. In which case, I might be able to go there. Um, or I can just grab this pawn. I kind of like that. Nice centralised queen. Checkmate threat there. Generally good. I've been playing a lot of Blitz recently and I am finding that some kind of playing by instinct to some degree. You know, when you do, you find a move and you just know that it strengthens your position. You can't really necessarily even put it in, into words why it strengthens your position. Okay, now here... Okay, ah. So I want to do this. Now if he takes my rook, I come in here with check, but then he's got that. Hmm. I think what I might, if I come here, I've got an idea of that, you see. But then, has he got this idea? Is that what he's thinking of? This is quite interesting. So he's attacking a rook. If I come here, let's say I save the rook here. Yeah? He comes here with a fork. 
I go maybe there. He takes rook anyway. I dive in with check. He goes on the back rank. That's when I want a rook handy. So let's say here, he goes, haha, I got you in a fork, didn't I? Right? Or has he even got queen there? Drop my queen back, he takes. I go in with check. King goes on the back rank. I get the knight back. I go like here, he does that anyway. Attacking one rook, yeah. Let's have a think. Right, I'm just going to try this one. Am I just going to try something? No, we don't. That's not what we're meant to be doing. Just trying things. Let's have a think. See, knight here. He takes rook. I come in here. King goes on back rank. Oh, everything's kind of defended. My queen's there. I win the, the knight, but I think that's about as good as we've got. But if I come here and he goes queen check, I just hide in the corner. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to do it that way. If queen check, I can just trade queens off and probably win because I'm up in exchange. And I've got the only bishop. Okay. Sold. That's a no-brainer. King's running out of squares. If I go here now, he goes there and forks, so we don't want that. So I've got, I, I can't go on that light square there. I uh, can't go there. Um, I could lift it. Or I could even go like b8, which looks a bit funky, but I can win a pawn here with check. King can't go there, 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 there. King has to go back rank. I get pawn. I've got an advanced pawn here. I think we're okay. So a bigger factor in chess appears to be as, as you get better. Oh! Well, that's interesting. Yeah, this factor is the concept of um, figuring out when you can um, <clears throat> to secure a winning end game, right? So it becomes sometimes less about trying to bash through and force a win, but when you can see, yes, I know that I have a win on the cards here, you just um, push on and do that. So he, he's got options, yeah. So he can defend the knight with the, the other knight. He could have defended the knight with the king. Either way now, I mean, I can now attack this knight because it's the defender of that. But if, if I take this knight, then this knight can't recapture it because this knight's pinned. It's not really defending that one. So if I go there, for example, he does that, I take, that's fine. I can simply grab the pawn on the way by as well. well I think this looks all right. Whatever he does, you know, if, if he grabs that, it doesn't matter. I just take this. King's in check. Now, this would be two knights for a rook. And that ain't bad. But I also have... The other thing that he's done, actually, is he's pinned his own knight. They're now both pinned. So now what about just c5? Knight moves, I just win the rook outright. C5. See, when you defend a piece, or, or block, a, block a check, or block an attack, it can be sometimes a self-pin. I think that's his mistake, so in here. Didn't think it through. You have to say, well, what's my opponent's best option here? So he's thinking, oh, you know, how can I defend the knight? Well, bottom line is he can't. Well, not that way anyway. Um, 
Just take a do die, I think. If rook takes, I'm going to trade off because I'm up a rook and a pawn. Trade off. Couldn't be easier. Okay, now I've got this if I wish. Um, king moves, I can take that with check. That's check, king goes here. Hmm. Or I just grab a free pawn. Grab a free pawn, defend this, and think about that another time. All right. Okay, I'm just gonna put that on the square where it's defended. I really don't have to do much now. Um, I'm gonna send Charlie up on his way. Okay, are there any threats around? Nothing. Off goes Charlie. Not sure, I think... Okay, so now he's attacking the bishop, but... This... is mating too, isn't it? The only legal move now is to block with the knight. And that's checkmate. Good game, though. Good game. Interesting one. Oh, he wants another game, does he? No, we'll leave it at that, I think. We'll leave it at that. I've learned my lesson a little bit on this one, once or twice. Uh, like the other day, I absolutely steamrolled some kid in, um, in a rated game, uh, wiped the floor with him, and then he immediately challenged back, and in the second game, he wiped the floor with me, and, you know, I, th I suspected he may have had some help. Uh, wasn't sure, you know, the, the analysis wasn't wasn't conclusive in that way, but he he was just relentless. Absolutely wiped the floor with me in, in one of my openings as well. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm a little bit wary now about accepting immediate uh, challenges back. But there you go, 1561, growing very slowly on that. But yeah, let's, so let's, let's do what I said. We'll do a very quick review of the game. All right, so here, tension number one. Right, do we take? Now, he didn't take here, he plays this. So, if they play the McLeod, this is called the Larsa Gambit, okay. So he brings his bishop out, which technically hangs his pawn. But I choose to develop. Now he takes. Now I push with tempo, now I get the pawn back. Happy situation. Uh, tension, again. Right, what do I do? So what, what you have to do is you have to say, okay, well, let's play it through different scenarios, right? Let's say he takes. Okay, well, let's start with let's start, let's start with I take, right? I take here, queen takes. Suddenly he's got a queen up in my face, right? Or I take, pawn takes. His C pawn has just been promoted to central pawn, right? Right now I've got a two to one central pawn advantage majority and this would give it away if I took. However, if I allow him to take, he's attacking my knight and there's no defender on that, so what do we want to do? Well, we're in the opening phase of the game. What's your priority in the opening phase of the game? Develop. Well, can I do what I need to do and develop at the same time? Yes, knight c6. Now if he takes, take back, happy days. Right? He doesn't do that. He moves his developed piece, bishop move number three. Right, he's gone one to here, he's gone to there, he's gone to there, he's gone to there, okay? So, can we do a green one? Yeah. So he started there, he's gone to there, 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 bishop move number three, on move seven. Not the cleverest. So now I, now I resolve the tension because there are a few benefits to this move here. Um, one is that it takes away the f3 square from the knight. Right, I'm just gen oh, I'm taking this square away from the queen as well. So now knight can't come here and various things. Right, there may even be options of pushing forward. So in this case, I was happy to put a, a, a halt on development or a hold on it. I could also play, for example, bishop d6. And then if takes, I've got option to recapture with the bishop. That would also have been perfectly fine. But I, I tend to like this. If I can just poke a pawn onto like the fifth rank, particularly if my opponent's knight hasn't developed. I think it's not a bad thing. Now he blinks. Now, okay, he's got a light squared bishop, right? And now I've staked my claim on the light squares in the middle. So that you might argue then that the bishop 
is inferior to the knight, but also my knight's not great at the moment either. It can't progress up the board. So he trades off. And now we're in a position where I've got two pieces developed. He's back to zero again, right? Tension. Well, it's not, no, it's not tension. He's attacking my knight. I'm not attacking him back. So here I decide to break the pin and he blinks immediately, right? So here, right, it's white to move. It's 3-1 in terms of developed pieces. So white could, for example, develop a knight. And then it would be 3-2. So after his move, he would be one behind. However, here, he's two behind. You see? Difference? He's still two behind. There's no push to pawn. Right, and now we have an interesting situation. Do I want to take here? Do I want to risk that? It's probably okay. Um, but in this instance, I decide to develop my queen, right? Which is what we want to do. Final steps of development, get castled, get the queen off the back rank, connect the rooks. When the rooks are connected, you know you've completed development, right? And this comes with a threat. I'm threatening to capture here with a discovered check. So he moves his king. Now he's given up castling rights. Now I decide to castle, remember this is the key one, instead of um, initiating the trade, because I realised that initiating the trade was just inviting my opponent to develop for free. Why would I want to do that? All right? The huge imbalance in this game so far is zero development, and he can't even castle anymore. He can't even castle. And he's, all his junk is still on the back rank, yeah? I'm done. I'm ready, I'm ready to start attacking now, yeah? He attacks my bishop. I drop back, eyeing up this angle. And it, now he pushes a pawn, okay? And really from this position, I think, what's that, like move 14? If we pull up the game review, I think it's gonna have white. It's gonna have white like plus four or something from that point, I would imagine. Sorry, black plus four, not white. So it should be that minus four. Yeah, so there's that the one block. What mate in two? I had mate in two. C4 is a mistake. What? Oh. I had a moment there. I thought I'd given away mate in two. I thought I can't see it, right? But. What is it? So. The line must be this, right? King here. Oh, and then queen just there. His mate. So if I'd done this, king f1 is forced. Ugh! Shy! Anyway, at least I've saved myself five minutes of everyone in the comments saying, you miss mate in two, you the forced mate on move 17. Anyway. Oh, but that's... Ah. Oh. How did I miss that? I bet there's all kinds of screens, you know, covered in breakfast cereal at this point now. People going, from spitting their breakfast out. Because I saw it, right? I saw the let's come in. King goes there, then... Go figure. Anyway, so yeah. So back to the review. At that point, move 17-ish. What's the evaluation? If minus seven, right? Even if he played the best move, it's minus seven. Okay, I blunder, and yeah, it's minus three. Because I'd force mate. Yeah, so minus two points. Yeah, there you go. Um, sorry situation there, but I, I think a good case study in in trading and not trading, and this stuff really does come with experience, but all you have to do is just sit there and go, look, let's, let's look at it both ways, right? Oh, well, it's usually three options. I initiate the exchange. I let my opponent exchange or I let my opponent do it and he doesn't do anything, right? Which of those looks best for me, okay? And and, and what do you fancy? So simple as that. Anyway, thanks Sahin Bay for, for the game. Thank you for watching. See you later.